Claire Lomas on the line. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, go ahead okay, for five minutes. Great. Um, so I'm going to keep my uh, comments brief. I am in support of the report to establish an independent Auditor General, um, the key being independent. As the other speakers have mentioned before me, as a member of the public, independence leads to trust and transparency of um, how taxpayer dollars are being funded and whether the programs being put forth are actually serving our needs. I'm going to take a moment to just discuss the city manager's comments as I feel, as the other speakers have mentioned, that they um, threaten the independence of this office. So with his first comment, with there being 7 to 10 staff and being dependent on city staff for information, I think that's actually an argument for the independent auditor general to have open access to um, information. I understand that's not a portion of the bylaw as it is right now, but as um, the representative from the CAAF suggested, I think that's something that would be worthwhile exploring in the future. I also like the idea of a hotline, um, which I'll get into some, for some personal matters after I address the city manager's comments. Um, as other speakers have said, with point two, that the salary of the Auditor General, that should not be under the realm of um, the Manager of Human Resources. The standard has been set by the CAAF, which is an um, authority in that specific field, and they would be the ones that would best know what to say. Um, Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have a point of order I wonder if uh, I can make um, on 6.2 in the rule, 6. Point, uh, so sorry, 6.1b, which is, I, I just want to be um, uh, cautious of, um, of alleging uh, uh, allegations that reflect negatively on our staff and the work we've asked them to do in commenting, making questions and comments on reports uh, that obviously I'm, I'm 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 reading I'm reading the, the comments me. from sorry um and actually I, you cannot speak over a councillor I'm sorry for oh, I'm that sorry. councillor Boyle go ahead I, I, I'm just hoping that um you could caution speakers that to comment on the report but not in ways that impugn the work that that our staff uh, are doing on the issues yes thank you very much for raising that councillor. Uh, Boyle, and um, uh, I do uh, want to just caution you, uh, Ms. Lomas, to uh, um, under our rules of conduct 6.1, um, uh, not to express an opinion or make allegations that directly or indirectly reflect negatively upon the character of individuals. So um, just uh, keep can, the subject of the, of the report. Um, can you highlight what comments I said that um, we're dodging I, that line. I think I, talking about the city manager's comments and impugning motive re regarding that or concern regarding that. Oh, I am unaware that I, I use that language. I try to be incredibly mindful. So, um, at what point was I then? I was talking about the the salary and just because I'm I'm reading the city manager's comments directly in front of me. So I'm not trying to impugn motives because it's what's being said in front of me. But I'm also trying to be mindful that I only have five minutes. So, the city manager recommends that the city manager of human resources involved in the setting of final salaries of the staff and the auditor general's office to align with the city salaries. That's what he said. So, I think that that um, would affect the independence of the office as the general manager of human resources falls within city staff and for the sake of transparency and maintaining the utmost of independence with the office. Um, I would suggest that you follow the recommendations of the CEAF, which is, as I said, um, the authoritarian for um, auditor generals, as, as far as I understand. So now going on to point three, um, where the, there is, quote, the potential for duplication for work is high. Therefore, the work of the auditor general's functions and that of the internal audit function would benefit from close coordination and alignment, and it may be worth and it may be worth considering having an internal auditor sit in the auditor general meetings and vice versa. As the professionals mentioned earlier, while I believe that there is value in having coordination, I do not think it is appropriate to have an internal auditor sit in on an independent auditor general's meetings. I also think that the potential for duplication is not um, a worthy consideration as the clients of these audits are different. The client of the internal audit is the city, whereas the client of the internal or the independent auditor general is the public and council. Both um, 
are key to having accountability for public dollars. And as other speakers have said, when we talk about point four, where it says finally the size of the office may be considering um, and that the office could be less, I am summarizing because I am uh, tied to a short amount of time, um, suggesting that the office could be less is not within the city's um, discretion if we are going to maintain the independence of the office. Um, again, the CAF has made their recommendations based on other cities' um, needs, and I feel like we can follow um, that um, standard. Now, um, I'm going to delve into the personal reasons as to why I find the establishment of an independent um, Auditor General's office to be so important, and this ties into the hotline that I mentioned earlier. As a member of the public, I have been reading reports um, coming out and that are publicly available, and I have questions regarding um, the quantity and the completeness of the information contained in those reports. And I have previously spoken to Council on some of those concerns, primarily um, the recalibrating the Housing Vancouver strategy on how um, the current strategy doesn't really tie much to income. Now, I would love to have a hotline that I could call to be able to ask for how um, the current programs relate to the incomes of people here in Vancouver, because I have tried um, all of the methods available to me publicly via um, a barring, I'm sorry, a code of conduct complaint. And it's really incredibly frustrating. Um, I am trying to rebuild a business in the midst of a pandemic, and I should not feel like I have to reread 200-page um, reports because the summaries do not contain complete information, in my opinion. Um, so that's why I personally think that this is of the utmost importance to establish an independent Office of the Auditor General as quickly as possible so that we can have some accountability to um, the public. This was a question that came up in a Vancouver Tenants Union City Hall Working Group meeting over the weekend is how do we hold our service, civil service accountable? And I think that the independent Auditor General is the clearest path to do so. I think that's my time. That's great. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, speak to us. Um, and uh, you